it can be installed on literally anything a car a truck an suv a sand rail kevin even said a boat, a boat. i don't <laughs> not a boat not a boat take that back <laughs> Now, for those of you that watched our previous video, you know what we're about to do today. You know what this is, and you know that we're still with Dan with Next Venture Motorsports. This is the Strike Force Zebra Air Command System. I already went over in the previous video the fact that they have two different setups. They have the single and the double. The double is more for competition use. The single is used for just about everything else. Now the solenoids inside this control module is rated for about 125 PSI. They are actually working on a third version that is gonna be rated for a higher PSI. But since we have this very fancy competition version, we're gonna use that since it's here. Now, in addition to this though, they have a bunch of other stuff, as you can see, that comes with this kit, including your on and off switch. They have heat shielding in case you wanna route anything by the exhaust. They've got your hoses that lead from your bulkhead to your tire. They've got the brackets for the bolt head, a grommet, so you can drill through the firewall and route it there if you so choose, or anywhere else that you choose to route it. They've of course got all your hosing to go underneath the Jeep. Then they have your quick connects that go to your valve stems. They have all the T connections and of course the bulkhead connections as well. All of this is getting put on today and we're super stoked because all of this is also run off of your phone. It is an app-based wireless system and all it takes is the touch of a button to air down or air up your tires to a preset setting. And you can have multiple preset settings, rocks, snow, mudding, or just regular trail riding, or of course, highway. So this is gonna be awesome. This is gonna be easy. It's gonna make our life fantastic for how much we air up and down on and off the trail. And I am super stoked. So let's get it done. Now it is important to note before we get started that this is a universal kit. It does not have to be installed on a Jeep. It can be installed on literally anything a car a truck an suv a sand rail kevin even said a boat, a boat. i don't <laughs> not a boat not a boat take that back <laughs> before we get started on the installation though i was going to show you guys a quick update on the final setup for the onboard air system by dan at next venture motorsports <laughs> now again this entire setup is a pre-production version we kind of had to do a little bit of figuring it out as we went along and we've already figured out a couple things we may tweak here and there but for now this is what we've got and it's pretty dang awesome so we've got all the wiring for the two viair 444c compressors all tidied up and you can see we've got our two relays here and of course we have a regulator now the reason for that is because this tank and these compressors put about 200 psi whereas as i said earlier the strike force siever stuff over here is only rated for about 125 PSI. So we don't want anything blowing up or blowing off on us. Now we've also got the filters for the remote air inlets. Probably won't see them way up there. Oh yeah, you can, look, look at that. We've got them mounted way up in the quarter panel, right behind the driver's side taillight. That way, ideally, we can go through water crossings without worrying about anything drowning. Like Kevin, because he doesn't know how to swim. What? <laughs> Now, as for the Strike Force Zebra Air Command, we already have the bulkhead brackets installed. As you can see, we took the 90 degree ones and we've got them right up here at the back on the quarter panels. And on the front, I'm gonna try not to hit my head on anything because I do that sometimes. We have them right here. Now from there, it's routing all the hoses and doing all the wiring and of course, making sure this module is properly situated where we want it to be. So let's do that. Can we get to work now, <laughs> please? Yes, yes you. you can. Thank you. I'll watch. Okay. Done. We're done. <laughs> so the boys are officially done. And it works. With the install. We have tested it. It does work. But before we demonstrate exactly how it works, I'm going to go ahead and take a quick moment to show you where everything went, where we put it, where we routed it, just to give you an idea of how this works. 
It actually works. went together pretty dang easy, and it worked from yeah, first, the first Yeah, the first time. hookup, it like, worked, surprisingly, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> so you can see, we've gone ahead and mounted that Air Command box right underneath the driver's seat, tucked up nice and neat. And it may be hard to see, but we did trim a little bit of the plastic off of the floor vent here just to make sure that it tucked up a little neater and sat in there a little nicer. And of course, as we move to the front, you can see how all the lines got fed up underneath this rocker trim here and oh i'm trying to get under here to show you you can see the provided grommet move that zip tight right there that is actually the grommet that strike force zebra provided for this entire kit and that is originally the master cylinder hole which that grommet actually fit perfectly into so all the hoses are fed through there up into the engine bay. Now, as for the switch that controls the module itself, we actually have that zip tied up underneath the dash. The reason for that for the moment is because we're sort of indecisive whether or not we want to go ahead and install a full switch panel under there. And until we figure out for sure what we're going to do as far as that goes, we don't want to drill any unnecessary holes in our dash. Yeah, so just temporary for right now. Yeah, and then as far as wiring goes, of course, all the power is routed to the battery up underneath the hood, and we have the compressors wired to one of our auxiliary switches. So we used AUX3, which is one of the 10 or 20 amp fuses for our switch because what we did was we actually wired relays under the Jeep. So that switch isn't taking any current, any draw or anything. I hit it, it's gonna activate the relay. So we used eight gauge wire for the power. We did use six off the battery and then spliced into two eight gauge wires. That's gonna be one for each pump. As for the lines themselves, and as you can see, I'm at the driver quarter here. We basically have, I'm gonna try to describe how these are routed but you have the driver rear tire and over here you have the passenger rear tire coming in to connect to this little T here. And this T goes all the way and it's hard to see. But you can kind of see it running along the frame up in there. It goes all the way to the front of the vehicle. I'm trying not to smash my head against anything. At least this time I have a crawler. All right, now here is your driver front wheel and over there is your front passenger wheel. Now the line that came from the back comes all the way up through the frame or along the frame and connects into a T right there. Both of the front wheels connect to a T and then that T connects to the T that the rear one connected to. And then the final line on that T, whoop, goes all the way up through the firewall and into the air command box underneath the driver's seat. Hopefully that made sense. Now the pressure line here that goes into our air tank runs up to this regulator and then from the regulator it actually goes up towards the front and directly into the Jeep and to that same air command box. Now, as for all the air that dumps out of that box, when the tires deflate. Jelly bean, hi. So those at the moment, they can be routed to outside of the Jeep, but at the moment, oh God, Jelly, at the moment, <laughs> they're just dumping into our Jeep at the moment because routing another two lines back out of the Jeep is kind of another big pain in the rear and we're sort of running out of space underneath the trim panels. That's my ear hole. But Kevin had a fantastic idea. I did. What are we gonna do, Kevin? Just put some new car smell or some little trees right below the exhaust <laughs> from the tires so it doesn't smell like tire inside. We're gonna put an air freshener right there so that when we're deflating the tires, they make our Jeep smell fan-freaking-tastic. Yeah. Japan squash. Oh yeah, we can get squash from Japan. Squash from Japan. What we're gonna do is unzip my little pouch here. This is just a makeshift pouch. Here are my four lines. We can go ahead and hook these up real quick. Show how this is done. Show how this is done. So come down, push this blue collar in, pull that guy out, insert your first hose. Boop, that's it. Just, just like that. So we're gonna go around and do all four of these, connect them to the bulkheads first. Technically, if you're airing down, you can just attach them as you go. But if you're airing up, you wanna make sure you attach them to the bulkhead first and then go around and attach them all to the valve stem. So we're just gonna go around to each one of these, connect all of them. There we go. Now go through and connect the quick connects to your valve stems. Again, when you're airing down, you can do that at the same time that you're actually plugging them into the bulkheads. But if you are airing up, you wanna do them in the proper order. All right, now with all of the valve stems connected, all you have to, what are you, 
<laughs> all you have to do is go to the app on your phone and from there you can control everything. All right, so I'm gonna come in here and switch the box on. Got my little switch under here. Simbly is the app. We'll just click on that guy. You do have to make sure that you have your Bluetooth on. It works through Bluetooth, so there it is, air command. Type in my secret passcode and there it is. So now if we wanna air down, you have your deals here, air down and air up. So we'll just simply hit air down. Shows our current pressure is at 26.6. .6. And you'll see right there in bright green, it says sampling. So it's figuring out what everything is. There's the noise. And there it goes. At this point, literally set it. And down that's it. And leave or go have a drink or, well, maybe not. Well, if you're in a down, you're soda. gonna have a uh, trail soda. Trail soda. So that's it. Let's do its thing and you just wait. Now, if we want to stop, oh crap. We're not going. You just hit cancel. You hit cancel. Turns it off. Oh crap, we, we can't go off-roading. We need to air back up. Hit your 28 target pressure. Hit air up. Do the sampling thing again. Figure out where you're at and where it needs to be. Give it a moment. And there, there you it go. Goes. It's airing up. Let's air down all the way. Mm -hmm. And then let's time how long it takes to air up all the way. Yeah, let's do that. All right. All right. So we're aired down to about eight PSI, which is what we typically run when we're off-roading. I've got my phone to film, Kevin's phone to control the app, and Michael's phone to time this, but we are going to air up all four 38 inch tires simultaneously from eight PSI all the way up to 28 PSI, yeah. which is more or less what we usually run on the highway. We're gonna see how long this takes. Operation complete. Hit stop. Nine minutes. It took nine minutes to air up four 38 inch Milestar Patagonias from 8 PSI to 28 PSI. That's not bad. That's freaking I mean, awesome. That's about how long it took for us to air up one tire uh, one with our about old four compressor. To five minutes, yeah. Nine minutes is not bad. And yeah. that's between obviously the Strike Force Zebra air command system, and of course, Dan mm. with Next Venture Motorsports, his system with the two compressors and the air tank bolted up, up underneath the Jeep, mm. which having dual compressors, of course, contributed a lot to how quickly that was able to air up. It's and you'll want to run three-eighths line through everything. Don't, uh... Don't constrict yourself. Yeah, don't, don't, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> so we have, we have a lot of awesome stuff planned in the coming months, but particularly this weekend is something that we've kept kind of secret and we're still gonna keep secret, but basically we have something really awesome planned with someone equally as awesome that a lot of you probably know. He's he's, he's more well known than we are. By a lot. By a lot. And he's been around for a long and time. And he's been around for forever. I hope to learn stuff from him. He's kind of a- uh, We're hoping he'll make yeah. us better adults. <laughs> <laughs> he's got his work cut out for him, but You'll have to stay tuned. In the meantime, as Th always. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and, and share. share. And, and we'll we will see, see you next time. time. Bye. Say bye, bye Dan, Dan. With Next Venture Motorsport. Say bye, sleepy <laughs> oh guy. Oh my God, Michael is Michael, out. Michael, let's go. <laughs> with jelly. Bye guys. <laughs> oh, he's awake. Bye, Michael. <laughs>